Hello and welcome. We're here today at the Hall of Nations at Pragati Maidan, designed by architect Raj Rewal with engineer Mahindra Raj. And I'm with photographer Ram Rahman. So these buildings, the ITPO, which comes under the Ministry of Commerce, decided to tear them down and build state-of-the-art structures in their place. We're here today with Ram Rahman to talk about their importance a little bit and why he thinks that this is not a good idea. Well, you know, we're in the middle of these uh, structures, as you see. Um, these were built in 1972. And uh, they have a great historic significance in um, Indian modernist architecture. Because, you know, after, after independence, uh, when we first started building the new city for the new capital of independent India, the buildings were very simple, straightforward, very cheaply built. We didn't have a lot of money. But through the 1960s, the second generation of architects, which include Rajewal, Mahinda Raj, the engineer, Kuldeep Singh, etc., they started getting a little more innovative uh, with their design and also design ambition. And what these buildings, the Hall of Nation and the Hall of Industries, um, really symbolized was that kind of ambition of, uh, you know, making a statement for the future, but done literally building by hand. And that's the remarkable thing about these buildings is that they're done in cast uh, concrete. And the engineer Mahinder Raj was an absolutely remarkable engineer. Some of the drawings are up right now in the exhibition I did at the Kiran Nader Museum. You see how complicated each of these joints of yeah. these buildings are. And you know, you realize that uh, nowhere in the world could you have built this in concrete except in India. Like so, in, it, you know, the combination that happened here was a really futuristic vision in design, mm -hmm. which really symbolized our vision for the future as an emerging nation, you know, making actually an international statement that, um, that this is how we can uh, move to the future, make public buildings which are inspiring, revolutionary and radical, but made completely by hand. And so in a funny way, it's, you know, bo co the combination of both the high technology and the handmade, which is almost khadi. So, you know, in, in many ways, it, it really symbolized what the nation stood for. Yeah. So these buildings have a significance, um, which is a national significance. And they've been recognized internationally right, yeah. for precisely that, you know, for its technical innovation, the visionary architecture. Uh, the main building, the Hall of Nations, is the biggest space frame structure in the world. And in other countries, it would have, you know, they would have tried to make it out of steel. Right. And we didn't have the steel. Besides the technological aspect, these buildings are inspired by Mughal architecture as Mr. Rewal has said, specifically the Humayun's tomb, which is taking that square format and then chamfering the edges in a hexagon. And the whole idea of the, of the, of the space frame is actually like a gigantic three-dimensional jali. So it's taking the inspiration from our traditional architecture of Delhi, but moving it into a futuristic uh, 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 space and mind, mindset. Here you can see when you come up the ramp yeah. uh, and you walk into the pyramid, you really get that uh, effect of the, of the Jali structure. And when you come close, you can see, you know, the complication of the joint where you've got the concrete slab joining these, you know, fairly thin uh, concrete beams. So this is a mix of both stress and tension uh, in the engineering. And you see how, how lively that is as, as an architectural form. And the other thing is you see that there's this texture which is made on the concrete, which is from the, uh, from the pouring of the concrete, which is the wood. So it's not just a flat surface. It has, it has a texture, it has a pattern on those other buildings you can see a more detailed patterning. You know, you can see it here. So you've got these little details which are quite um, uh, wonderful. The interior is spectacular. See, when you come in, you, you see the scale of the space, which is absolutely stunning. Uh, and we're on this upper level. There's a level below. 
but just look at how dramatic. So you can see from the maintenance that they've. Yeah, well, it's <laughs> well, it's also you know there's no trade fair happening just now, and the building is designed basically to contain. Uh, you know different exhibitions so it's this is basically a raw space but you know it's wonderful you see the staircases you know and you see the uh, the volume of the space inside which is a very very dramatic space yeah. uh, and then you have these levels with this with these cantilever staircases on two sides which can be used you know, either for performance or exhibition spaces. The whole building is like a giant sculpture. Yeah. So even the stairs are like sculptural elements, which are these spirals going down. Um, so architecturally, you know, the features in the building are, are very dramatic, uh, both from the outside and from the inside. And what you were talking about before, I mean, it's got a lot of international acclaim and a lot of it is the architecture, but also that it's been called a sort of engineering marvel. Yeah. So, because all, the entire thing is made of poured concrete, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So could you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. You know, when you see the exhibition with the model there and the engineering drawings, you see what uh, Mahinda Raj, who's one of the great engineers in the world, every level of this building has different loads. So every joint, uh, there are hundreds of drawings showing how, and they're very complicated joints if you look at them. You know, they're, they're, some of them, I think there are six or seven elements that meet. And all of those are done by um, reinforcing rods, which are bent by hand. So that's what's so incredible that's built in situ, you know, from, mm -hmm. from the ground up, yeah. bit by bit by bit by bit. Uh, so it's really a marvel of concrete yeah. engineering also. So the idea that these should be torn down when they're perfectly fine buildings, you know, they're not falling down. Yeah. As you can see, they're yeah. actually in very good shape. They just need a little uh, touch up right. and they can completely be adapted to a modern situation from the inside because this is a shell. Yeah. So they can be air conditioned, they right. can be, you know, environment controls which are modern can be put in very easily. Uh, you don't have to, you know, build an entire new structure. And, you know, ultimately, you know, uh, uh, you look back at a trade fair. Mm -hmm. One of the most famous examples is the Eiffel Tower in Paris. Yeah. And the Eiffel Tower was built as a temporary structure for a trade fair right. in Paris. And look at, uh, you know, what that structure has come to symbolize. I, I mean, it symbolizes not just the city of Paris, mm -hmm but also France. And, uh, you know, that's why it's, uh, I think it would be absolutely tragic to yeah. lose uh, a building like this, um, really for no reason. Yeah. But uh, just, I think, day before yesterday, the Heritage Conservation Committee of the government has said that this doesn't qualify as modern heritage. But, and, but what you've said, what they want is something that is more state-of-the-art, that it can be air-conditioned, they can have international conferences, but from what you're saying, that's perfectly possible here. No, it's first of all, you see the whole compound of the trade fair. Mm -hmm. It's very large. Yeah. These buildings only take a very small percentage of it. That's right. So if you want to build, uh, you know, a modern facility, which I completely agree yeah. is, uh, is uh, necessary, mm -hmm. you don't have to tear these buildings down. Yeah. But also, you know, the thing of making a big convention center in the middle of Delhi, when you've got this terrible traffic problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, even now you have traffic on the Ring Road and on Mathura Road, which is really bad. Mm -hmm. And now you build something which is going to bring in, you know, even more uh, thousands of cars. You're going to create a terrible traffic problem. <laughs> so these are practical issues. Right. And I think, you know, the question of state of the art you know, this is done by Indian architects, Indian engineers, yeah. and now everything is being given out to foreign firms. Yeah. Uh, and what I've heard is there's some Malaysian firm involved. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, when you're talking about make in India, here, what, why are you breaking what has been made in India? You know, your, your break in India yeah. now, which is, which is really tragic, you know. Yeah. And it's very sad, and I hope uh, there is some way to stop it mm -hmm. happening. All of nation, mm -hmm. when the project was given to me, um, I thought it should represent the optimism which we had at that time in, in India. I was very young, I was probably 36 years old, and 
it was a unique um, opportunity and one had the courage to do the largest pan structure of in concrete of that of space frame ever built at that time yes. and I think it's not been repeated also so we had the courage so I wanted to, to do that so that was one idea a structural framework itself is both a symbol of the building mm -hmm. and also functionally very appropriate and ecologically very correct and it's a very holistic building in its own way it's well ahead of its time in every way we're here now inside the Nehru pavilion which was designed to house an exhibition about the life and times of Nehru and this is another one of the buildings designed by Rewal with the exhibition in mind and it's also going to be torn down soon the Nehru pavilion is a bit more subtle I was given it only eight to nine months before, mm -hmm. Nehru, to my mind, was a great intellectual, mm -hmm. a historian, a statesman, and the project I was given was to house the panels uh, on his life and his time and his ideas, more than anything his ideas, how to make a building to house them. So I thought of it as a kind of a grass mound, a very simple building in concrete and um, kuta stone, rather bare. I thought of it as a very austere, coming from Buddhist um, uh, iconography of a prakarma. So that is what I had in mind, to not do anything pompous and heavy, which would Nehru might have hated, yeah. uh, you know, he was a sensitive intellectual. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do a building which uh, caught, carries that spirit. This building was uh, built, uh, again it's kind of an underground pyramid structure, yeah. uh, almost designed like a mandala in a square design. But the exhibition which was housed here for which this was built was Jawaharlal Nehru and his Times, which was done after Nehru had died. And it, it's a very famous exhibition internationally. It was done by the Californian designers Charles and Ray Ames and it uh, became historically very important internationally because how they combined uh, photography, uh, historic information, artifact uh, in a kind of timeline which gave a history became uh, internationally a kind of model for exhibition design and they had included uh, you know handloom fabrics, uh, pottery as part of the narrative. So the, that exhibition in itself is, uh, you know, worth preserving historically and it's a very, very important. Uh, the other reason it was very important, it was the first big exhibition that NID mm -hmm. uh, helped design. Okay. So it became kind of the training ground for the uh, yeah. faculty mm -hmm. at NID. If things go according to the government's plan, these buildings along with the Nehru Pavilion will soon be torn down. In the meanwhile, support for them has been pouring in from across the world. There have been associations of architects as well as museums like the Museum of Modern Art in New York and the Centre Pompidou in Paris, which have written in, asking that the government reconsider. The architect of these buildings, Raj Rewal, uh, the engineer Mahindra Raj, and well-wishers such as Ram Rahman are doing what they can to protect these buildings. But it remains to be seen what is to happen.